Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending November 8th. First up, this one was from 1954 Shadow. This is from Wired.com. If you're interested, there is a movie out right now called Interstellar. A friend of mine watched it and said it was a pretty good movie. But one nice thing about the movie is it seems like at least one aspect of the movie dealing with a black hole they seem to have gotten the science right, or at least as close as we know science to be as it relates to a black hole. This was a movie that Steven Spielberg was originally going to direct, but then um, he dropped out, and then Jonathan Noland uh, was a script writer that uh, wrote the script for it. But uh, after he dropped out, Jonathan Noland's brother, Chris, was going to direct, and he rewrote the script. Well, he also was familiar with Kip Thorne's work and asked him, to give a little bit of assistance with the movie, and Kip Thorne was more than willing. If you know who he is, he's an astrophysicist and pretty good at the math equations, too. So what he did was he lent his math equations to um, the film and the guys doing the CGI. Now, CGI light tracing is quite difficult, and one of the problems with it is it's not really written to be able to handle things like happen in a black hole, light ray tracing, expects light to behave in a normal way under normal conditions and a black hole is anything but normal conditions so what they had to do is actually go back from scratch and rewrite a lot of the software to be able to do this and as they rewrote the software and followed his equations even Kip Thorne himself was able to see in these CGI animations some new stuff about black holes that even he wasn't aware of because the equations result in things actually happening in the animation and some effects that he didn't even really count on before so if you get a chance just for the science aspect of the movie it seems like at least that part may well be worth it and I certainly plan this if it sticks around for this uh, next couple of weeks I plan on making a effort to go out and see the movie Inception myself so um, yeah it's nice when they actually take the trouble and somebody is really concentrating on getting the science right in these movies and I've heard things about other parts of the movie to where they don't really necessarily for dramatic effect or for whatever reason they don't necessarily follow exact science as well as this but I think I think it's a worthwhile um, thing that they did and I appreciate when people do take the extra effort in science movies to to really get it right and next up this is from my friend Dave N this is from petapixel.com astronauts trap Gro GoPro in a floating water bubble for science, of course. There's a couple of videos you can see. Uh, one strange thing about it is they do have a 3D video, but it's only, uh, you have, it's one of those red-blue 3D videos. You have to have 3D glasses to see it. Not that I really think in this it's, it's really that um, necessary. I, I watched the video without it, and it's just as enjoyable without the 3D effects anyway. But why in the heck didn't NASA use the YouTube 3D effects instead of just making it um, hard copy in the red blue they could have had it in several different ways so you could have made it a little bit easier for people to view it in 3D so as usual I think a lot of stuff that NASA puts out to the public I think they're 20 years behind in technology that way but be that as it may I thought the most interesting part of the video itself was not the views of the GoPro from the water bubble that basically to me didn't look any more fascinating than just taking a, a GoPro and dunking it in a fish tank really is about the best it possibly looked but from the outside views the guys filming the bubble and the GoPro in it I thought that was the real uh, views and what was happening to the water bubble and stuff like that so if you get a chance that's uh, something interesting to check out and certainly proves even in outer space that a uh, GoPro is definitely waterproof not that I'm uh, necessarily a, a GoPro fan over anything else I have a GoPro myself I like it but um, lots of good cameras out there. doesn't necessarily have to be a GoPro. That just happened to be what they used. And next, this one is up from Navy Thomas 8, and this is from BBC. Why is there something rather than nothing? This is one of those story theories, but I like this because it is really well written, and it's understandable, I think, even to somebody that's just a basic science geek, even if you're not really into a lot of the um, technical parts of it and you don't understand things in a complicated manner I think they do the best they can to explain this in normal terms that the average person I, I think even if you're not really into science if you're just a normally intelligent person you can follow this argument of why there is something rather than nothing uh, it gets into a lot of the explanations as to why 
they're pretty sure now we're in a flat universe rather than a curved universe and the fact that because we are in a flat universe causes this theory to be that there at least seems that this theory is the most valid one uh, it explains the concepts of those two it explains the fact that it seems like uh, more and more that uh, according to tests and experimental science, there really is no such thing as nothing. I mean, nothingness is kind of like fluctuating all the time. So, um, the same, it's, it's basically just like saying a, a plus this and a minus this is just as good as nothingness, really. So, if a plus and a minus particle pop out of nothingness, it's still just about equal to the same thing, too. So, the fact that our universe came into existence uh, given, you know, given just the way things behave is pretty much obvious. So... If you get a chance, check out. This is a very good read, and like I said, don't need to be a, a super science geek or a, even super bright uh, genius level to understand this, and that's what I like about this type of science. And this next one is from my friend Brian D. Telegraph.co.uk. This is about the Rosetta spacecraft, which has arrived, and I did a story on it before, that it's circling the comet that it's uh, set to send the probe to. And I did find, I was kind of, when I first saw this article, I was thinking since they are set to have the space probe touch down uh, Wednesday, this Wednesday, which would be, what is it, Sunday 9, 10, 11, that would be the 12th, Wednesday the 12th at 6 a.m., between 6 and 9 a.m. is when they're going to stream it. Uh, I got the link to the stream, too, as usual. All links are below. But 6 to 9 Pacific, which would be around 11 o'clock Central, 12 o'clock Eastern, I believe, so... Uh, as long as you're not at work, if you're home during the day, this is going to be a, a nice time to at least check it out and uh, um, see what it is like. I don't know what exactly they're going to show or if they're going to show everything in detail or if it's going to be mostly talking heads, but I'm glad they are at least streaming it. But this uh, space probe has to be done very carefully and very accurately, and they're going to do it over a seven-hour period because supposedly when they launch it, if they miss their trajectory by even as much as one centimeter, they could actually miss the comet altogether. But anyway, check out at this article at telegraph.co.uk, and the streaming site will be at the ESA website. It will be at rosetta.esa.int, and as usual, anything you want to know a little bit more about, check out the links below in the description. Thank you, everybody, for sending all this stuff in. I had uh, this entire show today is because of people sending stuff in, so I had four different users. Also... Be sure and check out, if you're on Facebook, join the Dumpster Divers uh, Facebook page. Uh, we've had some really good posts. One of the best posters we've had recently is Catherine S. on uh, TDD Report. She uh, did some stuff on uh, robot AI, um, AIs and robots and intelligence, stuff like that. We get some discussions going sometimes, but uh, it's a really nice site. It's active and people are participating. So if you get a chance and you're on Facebook and you would like to join our group, um, I would like to have you. So that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.